All right, guys. Uh, we just want to get started, and here's what we want to do. Um, you know, I've got on here. I've got uh, Dave. Dave Wilson. He's been with me. Huh, Dave? How long have you been with me? Uh, going on seven years. Over six, seven years. Yeah. So over seven years, and then the last what six months? I think it was. Uh, you started mailing for me, so that's why I wanted to, you know mailing, uh, you know, sending out emails for me and doing everything else, which has right. been one of the hardest things I think right. I've ever uh, handed off in the business, but. Um, but I figured it would be good to bring you in so that people can kind of hear your perspective on things, especially, uh, you know, since you're kind of newer to mailing but not really newer to the business, but uh, things like that. So I want to kind of, you know, what I want to do is um, actually another uh, team member and I, actually named Dave, uh, we put up, uh, we came together and we got on um, chat. And somebody in the listening club kept on asking, oh, you know, how can I increase my open rates? How can I increase my clicks? How can I? So, you know, we sat back and came up with 47 different ways to increase your open rates and clicks almost instantly. And so what I want to do is I'm going to share that with you guys right now. And, um, I, you know, we just listed them all out. I grabbed them all <laughs> from uh, the G-chat and then uh, put it, slid them in there and, and got rid of all the dupes. And we came up with 47 different uh, ways. So I want to bring... The other Dave in, and uh, because he has experience with this, and, and share with you guys things from there. So I want to go ahead and get started. And one thing you guys do know when it comes to email marketing, I mean, one thing um, you know, and we're you know we're always looking at our opens, we're always looking at our clicks. I mean, uh, things like that. I mean, it's really if you know can't get anybody to open it, I mean, you're not going to get anybody to click. But if you can't get anybody to click, you're not going to make any money. So <laughs> it all works in that direction, and um, you know the importance. Of it, it's really huge. I mean, and Dave, you can attest to that. I mean, that's one thing that we do track. We track our opens, we track our clicks. Absolutely, um, every day. day. Yeah. yeah. Because there, there are times that you actually ask me, like, how, well, how that last email doing clicks? And I'll tell you, yeah. like, oh, something's going on. So. Yeah, and, and when we see the clicks are low, then we can go look at the opens. We also can look at bounces. We can also look at, um, what do we look at? Well, we look at uh, bounces, complaints, and um, also opens and clicks. Well, you bring that up, and, and before we get into this, I think it's really good. Why would we look at um, uh, the bounces and complaints? Well, because, like, speaking on terms from, like, get response, for example, um, I've actually, when, when I first got started, I actually called them a couple times and asked a couple questions because I was really curious about the bounces because I was trying to figure out, so I see this, it's based in percentages, and I'm like, well, what's the percentage of, you know, and I heard about people's accounts getting shut down. I'm like, well, I don't want our account, no, me messing up your list and getting the account shut down. So I called them, and they were like, well, you wanted to have your bounces to be 2% or less, and then your complaints be 1% or less. I was like, what are you talking about, less of what? Well, on each of the stats, it actually pops up and tells you after each email, if you go to your stats, it tells you what percentage of the subscribers that the email bounced to. So I was like, oh, okay. So that sort of helped me just know, sort of get that factor of some of the emails. So if I saw that I was doing something wrong, or like a or spammy, shall we say, then at that point, then I would I know not to do it anymore because that if it's if it's bounced because to a, or a complaint, we don't want to lose that subscriber. Yeah, and so one thing actually, I mean, this is where we're heading, but I think it's still important because it is email marketing. Um, you know, even they, from what I understand, is if. You know, what do they look at first? So if complaints are high, they, they actually check the, the they check the bounces first, and bounces is the is the big thing, and then they start looking at other things. So then they'll move over, and if the, the bounces are high and the complaints are high, then they'll they can can accounts. And every you know every provider is a little bit different on their thresholds, but they do all kind of uh, go along with that. Um, and it could not just be the email. Let's be clear, it could be the you know. Uh, the list, you know, where you got your subscribers, things like that. So, um, so one thing I would like to stress to everybody, I mean, you know, we're we're kind of under the impression before we move forward that actually, you know, you did legitimately get your subscribers. Um, you are doing, you know, the right things to make that happen, um, and things like that. Because, you know, if you if you go out, I mean, it, let's just look at something from here. If you go out and and you're mailing a, you know, crappy list. Um, you know, you may you know you may never get anybody to open. You may never get anybody to click. But but using utilizing these strategies, um, you know, we're kind of an assumption they're making the you know we're making the you know that you be built you know a, a decent list uh, or you know from a decent decent strategies. But even if let's just say that even if um, 
you know, you do have a, a, a warmer, I mean, a colder list that's kind of dead and things like that. The things inside here that you can use in order to increase it. We'll talk about that. I know there's some things that we're going to be talking about, especially when we get down to, um, uh, let's see, actually, actually, maybe even at eight and nine. Um, there's some things you guys can do to really re-engage and get them going from there. So I just wanted to bring that up uh, from there. So let's go ahead and get started on the 47 ways to increase your opens and clicks almost instantly. Um, so with that being said, if I can actually get it to move, uh, let's go here. One thing to, to really take into consideration is negative subject lines. Um, you know, it's interesting. You know, if you look at, um, I want to just kind of share this with people. I mean, if you think about this, it's kind of odd how this world works and things like that, even if you look at the news. I mean, people are more attracted to negativity than they are positive uh, things, which sucks, you know, but it, it's, you know, which, you know, that, but it's the way that things work. And so, you know, considering negative subject lines, like there's a really famous one that, uh, you know, I would say, that, you know, probably one that's probably one of those famous subject lines out there uh, for, you know, from a negative perspective is bad news. You know, just saying bad news alone, um, you know, just using that as a subject line can really increase um, your open rates. Uh, and, you know, things from there. Some people will actually use it, try to use, like, a negative with a positive. But I will tell you, I've tried that before many times, and I found it doesn't work as well. So, like, you know, bad news, you know, bad and good news, you know. Uh, you know, people would rather hear bad news, that's it, than hear bad and good news. So give me an exa example, kind of give me an example of some, you know, something that, uh, you, know, neg you know, using negative subject lines. Um, is a is a great way to to get them to open uh, specifically on on opens um, you know on there and you want to make sure that you know when you are using these subject lines you want to be kind of be uh, you know open I mean you know you, you want to make sure that when you and I think I'll state this later on but you want to make sure that that subject line that you're looking at um, or that you're using you know just just doesn't use to get them to open but you got to get them to click so you got to make sure that you know whatever that bad news is where that negative thing is, you're relating, you're, you're speaking about that inside the email to get them to go. Um, you know, a ne negative one, two, I'll give you another example, and actually I was going to use this one, it was like screw Facebook or screw, um, you know, screw Google, um, you know, whatever, and kind of make it, you know, maybe it more give a negative, uh, negative spin on it, or, you know, you know, I've used it before where something like, you know, a thousand, you know, accounts just got shut down. I mean, that's negative. It's going to get people to, you know, open up uh, from there. I mean, Dave, can you think of any negative ones that we might have used uh, recently that might be a good example? Well, like, and there's one I think that you that we use um, a while back. It says, "Don't be stupid." Yeah. <laughs> don't be silly, or don't be silly. Stupid. Yeah, don't be silly, or don't be stupid, or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think that's something like that. And I know I I, I handle support sometimes too. And at that point, you know, it. Uh, some people say, "Don't, don't, don't, don't tell me uh, not to be silly or something like that." I'm like, you know, sorry. But but it does get people to open. I mean, if they didn't. Yeah, it, it does. They right to that, those, the, absolutely, yeah, they'll, they'll start responding. Yeah. So I mean, so number two is you know, and this is one thing most people don't really realize is you know, optimizing for mobile devices. A lot of times when you're going into your accounts nowadays, um, there is a way that you can kind of view it. Um, kind of get a view of what it's going to look like in there. And when I'm saying optimizing for mobile devices, typically what I'm talking about is, you know, your subject line, you know, making sure your subject line is short and it's going to be able to be read in a, on a phone device, um, making sure that, you know, your, your verbiage doesn't go all the way across the screen. Um, and what I mean by that is, and, and we do this a lot, um, I'm going to kind of open up my uh, thing here and just share with you, we typically, whenever we're writing emails, um, we use, oops, actually, we use um, text. So that's one thing I've always told, um, you know, Dave knows about this. I'm always big into making sure we use a notepad um, and, you know, whenever we're writing emails. And Dave, before we, you know, before I get into and showing you something here, um, I just want to share, Dave, why do I have, why do I always do this? Uh, well, because, well, like, for example, like, uh, Whenever you're trying to transfer it over to get response, there's, there's no code or anything. It's, it's plain text. So, and also too, it helps you be able to figure out how to how long to write your um, your email. So, one little trick I showed Dave a long time ago is basically if you look across your screen on your on your keypad, 
um, you'll see like the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero. So basically, one thing I do is I just roll, scroll my fingers all the way across. So that'd be uh, one to zero, so that's ten, and I'll do that five times. One, two, so let me add zero, uh, two, three, four, five, and that gives me fifty characters long. The reason I say that is because you want to keep it in between here. I like to actually keep them a little shorter than this. Um, but if you if you're keeping your emails about uh, that wide, you should be fine. You should be fine. Um, I like to keep mine roughly around, you know, probably about 45. I'm, I'm just eyeing it because uh, I don't do this much anymore. But if I would actually, I would probably say it's even lower than that. So probably in there, that's about the width that I usually keep my emails. Um, so that's about what one, two, three. It's about 38 characters wide. Um, you know, maybe I say, normally we do 35 to 40 characters. Normally is what I is what I do. Yeah, and so that it looks de you know so it looks good in there because you don't want it to you know break in the in the in the on the mobile device. You don't want to even. I mean, plus what you want people's eyes to do. I mean, one thing to know when it comes to email marketing is or you know getting people to read your emails. You want them to slide through, like be able to scan. You know, like when they open up the subject line, you want them to slide to the next you know next line and things like that. So, um, so we keep it so keep it about. That um, about from there when you are writing it, um, so your emails, so that they can be, you know, when somebody's using a mobile device, uh, they'll be fine. And so something to really think about uh, from there is just, you know, looking at how it's going to look on your phone, uh, looking at how it's going to look on different mobile devices. All mobile devices are different, but keeping it inside this realm is going to be really good for you. So um, to think about uh, from there. So. You know, like kind of, you know, when I say optimize it, you know, make it, make sure it looks good for mobile devices. Um, typically, when we are sending our emails, we actually do not use um, graphics inside our stuff. Um, so we actually send only straight up emails. I mean, emails just plain text emails, and we're using it through. Um, we use a text file, and the reason why, just kind of getting back to it, the reason why is so that we can actually make sure that you know, we're spacing correct, and also when we're copying and pasting it, we aren't taking any you know, code with us, and we're pasting it into whatever mailing program that we're using. Uh, we typically use GetResponse, but, you know, other people are using different things. So um, so that's something to think about from there. So that's so that's number two. Number three is avoiding the spam, um, you know, spam singles, uh, signals, like all caps. Um, you know, that can, you know, especially all caps. I know that um, all caps, specifically in your subject line, sometimes will get you, um, it'll give you a higher uh, spam rating. But doesn't mean that you're going to get, um, you know. It, so it might get caught in the spam filters. There are times that I use this um, that actually will have all caps. I have found that you know it's it's now it's kind of one of those things that does get um, beat up before at the beginning when I started doing it. Um, it wasn't you know big, but you want to make sure you're not using all caps. You're not using you know exclamation marks. Just bam, you know like a bunch of exclamation marks. I think that's worse. Um, using a lot of dollar signs, like continuous dollar signs. So. You know, and, and let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Is you know, when you are writing an email, you come over here, and I'm you know, I'm talking about not going, you know, you know, buy this, you know, you know, like that. Don't do this. That would be stupid. Um, you know, you're gonna, you might get, it, it won't probably won't get delivered, uh, but you overusing, um, you know, things like this are gonna get you in a lot of trouble. So. And don't you know buy this? You know money, 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 money. That's what we're talking about here. So yeah, they don't like that at all. <laughs> Dave, you, were you saying something? Yeah, yeah. I said they don't like all those uh, like the, the caps and the dollar signs, especially. Yeah, and um, yeah. I mean, exactly. And you know, and signs and other symbols and stuff like that. Right, it's just, exactly. That's what spammers do. So you want to be careful about that because it's not going to help you, um, and it's going to get you caught in the spam filters. Because you got to. Because the one thing to think about it's not just about getting it. You know, well, the way one way to get it open is getting it delivered, and if you're getting caught by spam filters, you're going to get screwed. So things like that. So and another thing is for which kind of along this line is avoiding spammy words. You know that trigger spam filters. And so I'm going to I'm going to kind of give you some uh, listing. And Dave, I need to send you these. But I mean, just kind of what I was talking about: the exclamation point and next exclamation point, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. You know, 100% free. Um, you know, act now. A lot of these, I will tell you, we tend to some of these we tend to use. Extra punctuation, I think, is really important. These aren't listed in any specific order. I will say probably the first two are things you really want to avoid. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we might use you know act now inside there. But you can say different things like you know grab this right now, um, you know right now, um, 
set of act now right now um, you know but there you can see right here um, there's multiple different uh, things inside here these can get you um, in the you know can can possibly pick, get you inside uh, caught by spam filters before your email gets out um, so they won't ever get delivered they'll never get seen but um, so just kind of look through here and kind of get an idea. The interesting thing is the word marketing is even inside that. However, I would like to say something. I mean, Dave, when we're going, and I think this is good for people to understand. Um, so when you go in and we're writing an email, and one thing that we do when we're writing an email, we go in and we you know check. Um, you know, we go and we send the email to ourselves. We check it, but we also check um, the spam score. Yeah, spam score. And so when we're looking at the spam score, kind of why don't you tell them kind of some of the things that I said? Because I know um, you, you also deal with some clients and all like, oh, the spam scores that you know whatever. What do you, what do we typically tell people? Okay. Well, like for example, like um, now I'm speaking in regards to get response because that's primarily what I use at this point. But they have a base out of like a 5.00. All right. Um, like for example, if your email is too short, they will say it's like 2,400 to 3,400 bits. Or somehow along those lines, because the email is so short, but you only get like a point four um, out of a out of a total five total points, you get like a point four. Um, as and it, I mean, it says most time it, it would not be recognized as spam. Some of those, it's just it's, it's, no. The emails are short. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Just go ahead and send it because the point where, until you get over that five is when you really got to start worrying about it. But now there are some things when when you do that spam score check where you can actually do some changes on your email to make that spam score lower. Like for example, like you may say that your your domain is on a DBL blacklist or something like that. Well, if that's the case, just take it, take your, get your domain off the blacklist, and you're good to go. No, no big deal. Yeah, and so, but I mean, spam. I mean, basically, what a lot of these folks are using is spam assassin, um, and so that's kind of what people are. Um, a lot of uh, different emailing solutions are using uh, spam assassin. Um, and, and if you don't have it with your system that you're using, you can just go to spamscorechecker.com. I believe it is spamscorechecker.com, and that'd be a good place to go. And they, it just basically lets you kind of see what's going on, uh, what your spam score might be. I think I think you can do it for free there. You basically send your message to them uh, to an email box, um, and it will you know basically check your spam score and then send you back whatever your score is. Um, so. And then you know, you know, a lot of times you want to make sure. I mean, sometimes the um, you know the the one thing to, to take into consideration is just because you do have some kind of score, does it mean that you're going to um, you know? And actually, they can run from uh, zero to ten, just so you know, with Spam Assassin. Uh, but basically, you know, although you might you know have some you know lower numbers, you can still mail. So just taking consideration. Um, you, you know, you could still mail from there. If if your score is less than five, um, then you're still going to see you, 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 you're, you're still seeing deliverability issues, but not much. I mean, so you can lower your score. Um, and one thing that we look at, I mean, sometimes you know, like a one, you can get a you know, like let's say we hit a one percent. Where do we typically? Sometimes we hit. We don't always hit it, but sometimes we do hit a one percent, a two percent, or maybe most time it's one point three. One point three, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. So don't get you know in a panic if you do see something like that. But um, and you know the funny thing is sometimes you'll find <laughs> that you know your your 1.3 will actually have the best clicks and the best you know best opens from there. But you want to avoid getting it really high. Specifically, if you see it above five, um, you know uh, above five, I would be really scared. Now I, 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 I'm going to be scared, but I would be working it, uh, reworking it a little bit to make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's see. One thing too, Matt. Not trying to interrupt you, but like I'm, I'm looking over this list. I know there's actually one phrase particularly that actually popped out that I don't see on this list is uh, whenever whenever you're using regards of making more than a hundred percent back of your money in a sense in your emails that 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 phrase alone is like two point nine to three point one percent just for that one phrase make so like, like money back guarantee or something like that well it's like for example like I'm making 120 percent anything is over a hundred percent oh over a hundred percent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I've seen that lately too yeah if you, you say see over three hundred percent open rate or whatever right right which 
that was a bad example, but you know, three hundred. Yeah, but it was. Yeah, but, 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 like you make make a hundred and twenty percent back of your money back off this offer or something like that, something along those lines, you know. And the spam spam checkers, they don't like the, when you do anything over a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So that's something to take into consideration. Those are some things to really think about here. Uh, when it is coming to that, one thing, this is one thing that we're really big on, you can ask Dave, we actually ask him about this every day, um, we split test different, well, we split test all the time. Now, there's two ways to do split testing. I think the next one is actually going to be the way we probably do it the most, but there is, is two ways to really split test an email. If you think about this, an email is, you know, there are two basic parts of an email. It's the email itself, the verb, the words inside there, and there's a subject line. So, but you could split test two different versions of the email itself. So, um, and typically, the way I look at this, and you know, the way I typically look at this, um, if we come back over here, and I'll go to here, if, you know, a lot of times when I am writing my, my emails, I'll just put it here. Um, 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 so I'm just using this as an example. I just wrote this um, real quick, as you can see me doing. But um, so you know, hey, subject line. This is really cool. Um, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I found something. You know, found a really cool thing that you need. You need to check out. Go here now, um, and that would make the go here now be a link. So this is an example of one. I can you know, and I can actually have. The same, so I can test, you know, that or which is more of what we call blinder um, copy, and then I can go and create another one, um, and we could split test another one, which would be, you know, maybe the same subject line. So we want to let you know that I found a really cool. Instead of being thing, I'll be more specific. Software. Um, And I could do something like this. Different, you know, I could split test. Uh, a lot of times I might do a radical different, or this one is, this one's really blind. This top one's a really blind one. Um, this one right here is a very more specific, you know, and telling them what that cool thing is, or the cool piece of software that will help you uh, with finding keywords. So I tell them exactly what it is. A lot of times, you know, this is a, an example of uh, testing a blind email versus a more specific email, a uh, more transparent email. So. So that I want to give you an example of how you know a lot of times when I will test um, emails, that's kind of how I'll do it. I'll have a blind, I'll have a more specific, you know, uh, from there, uh, more transparent. So you will typically find you're going to get more clicks. Now I'll just kind of share this. I typically find I'm going to get more clicks through a blind. You know. Typically do. I mean, of course it is. I mean, they're going to start to go, what the heck on the other side. Um, but many times that I'll find that. Um, I might have a better, more buys on a very more transparent email. So something to think about, um, and we'll get into more of this topic a little bit later. But just want to give you a general idea, an example of um, you know of split testing, um, you know things like that. So that's number. So that was number five. Um, so split testing is different variations of the email, um, and then number six is split testing subject line. So. I wanted to share with you, and actually, I'll, Dave, I'll actually let you talk about this because I know you, uh, we split test, what, five radically different subject lines every day, um, actually twice a day. So why don't, can you talk a little bit about what we do and how we do our split testing? Okay. Well, like, for example, a lot of times, if, if, we're, if I'm promoting uh, an offer from an affiliate, um, probably about 95% of the time, they'll actually provide, their, uh, provide email swipe files. 
they'll give you one subject line and they'll, they'll give you the copy uh, for, you to, for, for your email, the body. So what I do is I'll read through uh, the, the, their emails and what I'll do is I'll pick out other different subject lines that goes along with that email. So basically, because you've always told me that, you know, that sometimes the best subject lines could be the, the copy that's the, 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 actually inside the copy already. So what I'll do is I'll pick out some of the, some subject lines and I will split test those subject lines with their email and then and, and then at that point I will choose the winner. So so for yeah, I mean that's a good example of I mean that's a great example um, you know from there of, of doing that. Actually I was gonna hurry up, I was gonna try to see if I can sneak and do um, get a get an example of one real quick oh, that you didn't sure. But let me uh, flip over real quick and just give you an idea of what I just did. So um, here's the email that I just did. So to give me an example, um, you know, this, let's, let's look at this email real quick, um, you know, right here. And I will, um, you know, come over here and grab this. So, so we'll look in here. So, um, we could use, so one subject line could be, I want to just let you know. Um, control. I'm going to bring this over. Um, you know, I just want to let you know. Boom, boom, boom. Um, a lot of times I'll use like the dot. Um, also, like need help finding keywords. Need, yeah. Um, see here. Control C. Right into the question. Um, let's try this. A lot of times this works really well. Subject. Um, and I'm going to change this. So a lot of times adding an S. So it helps you with keywords, uh, finding keywords. Oops. Helps you with finding keywords. Boom. So there's one, two, three, four. Through this. Ah, you know, we could actually take this one right here. So we've got, so we take the, so this is kind of what Dave was talking about. Let me check this out. Boom. Oops. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of times when we're using get responsive, we can do five um, different subject lines. Different programs are going to be different ways. But here would be an example for the same email. And look, you know, look at this. You know, this is a real, you know, this is really cool subject line at my work. Um, I want to let you know. Good subject line. Uh, do you need help finding keywords? You know, the uh, help you finding keywords helps you finding keywords. Um, you need to check this out now. When we are split testing subject lines, Dave, I think it's interesting. You know, what are some things like? Um, I know we used to play games like, I wonder which one's going to win, and I'd have one, you'd have one, or you know, have a couple, and we find things that win. Uh, what are some things that you discovered? You know, or you've kind of like ahas for you when it came to split testing subject lines. Okay. Yeah. Like for example, um, a um, well, the, the, this is just from you no know, past emails that I mean, like for several subject lines, um, like um, no experience needed or uh, beginners wanted or um, uh, uh, I need to ask you something and then like we will pay you or something along those lines. That, that, those have been some really good subject lines in the past that has almost tripled our clicks over other subject lines. Yeah, but when you're looking at that and we're split testing, I mean, is it always, I mean, of these, can you ever just say, oh, well, of these one, two, three, four, five here, I mean, can you tell, can you tell me which one's going to be the winner? Um, I would, let, let me look at it. Let me think about it for a second. I would probably say, it's, 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 nine times, I think, nine times out of ten, we can never figure, we never know until we test. Exactly, you know? we don't. I mean, if I had a guess, it probably might be the first two, but it could be end up being the fourth one for all we know. Yeah, because a lot of times, I mean, I think it's like I can't believe this one win. I mean, that's probably the a common phrase in the office. I'm actually shocked. I'm like, I'm like, dude. I mean, I'll actually yell at this. Like, check out this subject line and just one. It it really blows my mind sometimes. But you really can't argue with the numbers. Yeah. So you want to look, and you know, when you're splitting subject lines, I think it's here's an important thing, and and Dave kind of hit on this a little bit earlier. So when we're split testing subject lines, and this is kind of a radically different way of looking at it than most people do, yeah, you would think we're split testing subject lines to, um, to get the, 
to figure out which one's going to get us the best opens. But really what we're doing is we're split in subject lines to find out which one's going to give us the most clicks. Because we may find that this is really this this is really cool, might have more opens, but you know, uh, helps you to find keywords actually add the highest clicks. So if we're sending this email out here, which one's going to make us the most money? The answer to that the answer to that is the one that gets us the most clicks. So we're looking for, and that's when we're doing this, and this is, should be an aha for a lot of people, and that's why I'll argue with people, like, oh, you know, yeah, it does, it, it kind of, like, it's counterintuitive in a sense, because you would think the highest open subject line, which should be the high, the, should be the highest clicks, and, you know, nine times in ten, that's not true. I've actually, pretty much on every single one of our tests, a lot of times it's the second, maybe the third uh, highest open rate is going to get us the, um, is going to get us the most clicks. Would you say that would be correct? Yes, yeah, yes, sir, absolutely. Or sometimes even the lowest open rate one gets us the most clicks, and what we really care about the most is the clicks. Now, some people might be saying to themselves, well, you know, but, but what about this? ISPs care about the open rates, um, and the email program does, but when we're nailing specifically, like, to sell something, you know, if you're sending out, let, let me get you guys' head around this, because I think this is really important. If you're sending out an email and you want people to just read the email, not take any action, just read it. Well, then of course, yes, open rates are the number one most important thing. But if your purpose of doing this, of mailing, is to get them to click to go to an go to a um, an offer or to go to take an action, then you know you you want to pick. I believe you want to pick the email that gets you the most clicks, or that gets you the most people taking the action you're looking for. That's why you test anyway. So. Um, even though we want the action to get them to open, I think you know it's one of those things you want to get it to you know really increase your clicks. Well, I mean, I'm here, I'm, I remember specifically we had an email uh, split test one time where we had one subject line had uh, nine opens in like seven clicks, and we had another email that had twenty opens in like two clicks, and. I remember, and this is right when I first started, I was like, well, and you actually explained the same thing because I was like, well, I need to go with the one that has the three clicks. You're like, no, why? Because I was like, well, because we have more opens. He's like, nope, that's not the, no, and he, he told me, I was like, well, that makes perfect sense. Exactly. Right. So the, um, the other thing is, too, this is what most people don't know, is use the subject line as the name of the redirect link. Um, you know, if you know, the subject line you're mailing is I mean, um, they, they know that the subject line that you're mailing is exactly oh actually I mean, I'm pause it because I didn't think I knew there was something I was doing weird all right so um, but use the subject line as the name of the redirect link and here's what I mean by that so let's get back to um, over here okay maybe okay so I came over here to this email and let's say that um, helps you finding keywords as the actual winner. Okay? So let's just say that, um, you know, or this is the one we're going to actually mail. So the subject line we're actually going to mail is that out of all of them, right? So, um, and just so people know, the reason this is over is because we got word subject line. So this, this is the subject line I'm using. Okay, so um, helps you finding keywords. I might actually um, make the link be you know, something relevant to it. So it helps you finding keywords is really long. So I might not put that as, you know, domain.com forward slash helps you finding a keyword. But I might go, you know, um, something relevant or really close to that. So it'll be like, you know, my URL that I might be using is www. You know, it's a redirect is what we're talking about here. Um, redirect link com forward slash, you know, finding keywords maybe. Um, something to that, you know, nature. Um, you know, something there. And what you'll find is, and if you think about this, if 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 it says help, you know, if you're saying, you know, it says helps you finding keywords, and then the, the read the link that you're sending says finding keywords, you know, is related, the subject line is related to, to the link because you're using a redirect, um, then that can increase your click-through. Um, you know, and that's something to think about when you are doing it. So, you know, on that. Now, there's another way, another thing you do and it's kind of a little bit different, but it's also creating it, using it. Um, I said it there. I, I don't think I talked about this later, but something that popped up for me is saying that you could actually use this for use it instead of using the um, you know subject line in there because that does work, but also using it as a call to action. 
So you can actually put a call to action, like you're redirecting link, or so it's call to action. Um, so you know, instead of being you know go here right now, you, know, you could put go here now. You know, something like that. So it's a call to action that you're using in your in your thing. Also does and help increase uh, the clicks. So I know Dave, you're really good at doing that. Uh, you want to give us some examples of how you pick and choose the uh, you know the links. Uh, sorry, the phone, was, the phone was like I was cutting out. What was the question? No. So when you're picking, you know, when you're creating a, you're creating a, a link or a redirect link, you know, what what do you, how do you kind of create the end? Oh, basically, the call to action. Um, like for example, like, like you were you were covering it with the like go here now or finding keywords. Um, I, I try to find something that's inside the subject line, but you know, when when like as often as I split test, I really can't. It's hard for me to use. One certain um, you know, phrase, in a sense, to use for the redirect because obviously I've got five different subject lines. So a lot of points, then I'll just I'll just use a call to action like uh, like activate now or uh, uh, like go now or, or check this out. For example, like how you say you know you have you need to check this uh, check this out. I was I would actually use check this out is actually one of the redirect links. Good. So what you're saying is, so what you're saying is that this good for people to understand is that like we were talking about using the subject line, you know, uh, in, or pulling words out of the email for the subject line, right? But pulling words out of the email for the redirect link. Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's a good thing for people to you know to understand. You know, on that. So, um, from there. Now, let's go over here. Let me pull up this one. So that's another thing to really think about is using the subject lines redirect. We actually added some more to that is using a call to action in the redirect that also increase your clicks, and or pulling something out of the actual um, email itself. Another thing to think about. And this is what people do sometimes, but not all the time. This really works really well. Is resending your email to those who did not open the original email. Um, this option is available in GetResponse and Weber, I know, but you can resend the email to those that did not open. So if you send the email out, you want to get them to open. A lot of times the reason might be is because of the time that you sent it, and there's things that you can do um, around that, which we'll talk about later. But but the thing is, is resending your email to those who did not open the original email, you can resend out to them, and that works really, um, really well to re-engage the people that didn't open the first time. You can pick up a lot more opens, you can pick up a lot more clicks. Um, you know, for that. So that's one thing to do. But number nine, and is actually uh, another little trick, which is really related to that, is use forward or re uh, to the non-opener. So when you're resending the email, so I'll kind of go over here. I will um, grab this email right here. Uh, let's just say we sent this email out to somebody. I might actually. Um, you know, take this email, the subject line was this, I can actually send this. I, I might actually create another email and do it, you know, right over top of it. So it's the same exact email, and I would send it like, you know, FW um, over here. And then, you know, I just wanted to make sure you got this because it's Seriously cool. You know, something to this, you know, uh, you know, right here, and then, you know, I might just have the original email underneath it. So I would send this whole thing out. This would be the subject line, the new subject line, and this all would be the new email. So that works um, really well. And I do this. I do this quite quite often. I mean, not often, but I do it um, very frequently. I would say once or twice a month. Um, this works really well because it's something like, hey, I just really wanted you, especially if you had an email that worked really well. You know, you sent out an email, it worked really well. You can resend it back out to the people that didn't, um, you didn't see it. Or you can actually, even though I said it to the uh, non-openers, you can actually send the whole list. But, um, but if you want to re-engage and get people uh, to take action, maybe you did you know mail the one in the morning, uh, and then later at that night you can forward it to them or read it, um, you know, to them. That works really well uh, from there. So let's go to the next one. All right. So that's one thing. 
Right? Um, so that's one thing to think about on that. Now, and this is a really cool thing. This is what I was talking about. Now, in Gary response, that's what GR stands for. Um, in Gary response, they have a thing. I think it's called Time Machine. Um, but what it allows you to do is you can say, hey, um, it, it recognizes every, where everybody's at. So, like, you know, if somebody's in the UK, somebody's in, um, you know, uh, on the East Coast, the West Coast, and everything else, you can say, I want to send it to people at exactly 11 o'clock, their time. So you can use it in the sense of the same exact time as their time zone. And this works really well. So um, you can use the time machine to be able to send those emails uh, to them, you know, regardless of the time zone. It'll just say, oh, well, 11 o'clock, wherever somebody's at, I want this to be sent out. So uh, that's uh, a great way to actually do that. Um, it will, I mean, think about this, because if they're not uh, sleeping, if they're not, um, you know, uh, whatever they're doing, I mean, you know, if they're not, if it's not, you know, right at their, you know, typical drive time, you know, then they can probably get it. So if you send it, send it there, that works really well. Um, number 11 is sending a pre-framed email. Now, uh, what I mean by pre-framed email is um, is something to this effect. I'll just kind of show you here. So sending a pre-framed email is pretty cool. So what it is is basically, um, yeah, we'll just go with this thing here. I don't have to rewrite this. Um, so let me just read what we have right now. Um, let's go back to, let's take this off, and let's just go back to this. So the subject line, let's say we're going to send this email tomorrow, but today we want to send an email to, to kind of help with this, okay? So, so the subject line is helps you finding keywords. I just want to let you know that I found a really cool piece of software that will help you with finding keywords, check it out here, boom, boom, boom. Um, that's the email we're going to send tomorrow. But today, we want to send something to kind of pre-frame that. So instead of uh, sending an email, we're kind of gearing this up. I, you know, I say, hey, you know, I would say, you know, something like, watch your email for tomorrow. Because I'm going to send you a link about <laughs> you know, um, and I could do An email called Watch Out. Um, so that could be the email. I mean, just kind of give you. I'm doing it really quick. But to the subject. Subject. So you know, subject is Watch Out, and then it's like, you know, watch your email for tomorrow. Watch your email tomorrow, or for tomorrow, or whatever tomorrow. Um, watch your email tomorrow, because I'm going to send you a link with something cool about something cool, to pop it out. You know, and then tomorrow I send them, that's the pre-frame email, and then tomorrow I send them this email. Oh, it helps you find a keyword, you know. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about pre-frame. I did that real quick, so um, you could think these out a little bit more, but I just want to give you the idea of what I'm talking about because I can really help you uh, make things happen. So, um, you know, from there. And Dave, we've done this before, right? I mean, is there any, can you give us maybe an example of something we've done? Um, or if you got it, if you can think of it. Uh, well, I know you did one time before when, um, like for example, one of the events that we have coming up, you had um, you sent out a preframe. Like, hey, I'm gonna be sending you out something. I have something planned, really cool for you. But I'll be sending some more information about it tomorrow. Something along those lines. Yeah, perfect. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of times you do it for webinars, um, physical events, physical events, even launches, webinars. Um, you know, or even, you know, somebody's product launches, stuff like this. So instead of, you know, sending them to a preframe, you know, video about it, you can just write a quick email and preframe about it you know, from there. I think this is really important. So number 12. Um, so number 12 is make the first line in the email, fold them into the rest of the email. Okay, so what does this mean? Let me just share with you. So what this means is, is basically, we'll get back here. Um, is what most people don't realize is it, when you're when somebody's opening up their email, when they see their email, they'll see the subject line, and 
um, they'll see, you know, see right here, the subject, watch out. That would be the email, they see the subject line, but they also, a lot of times they can read the first line in the email. So that first line in the email can also help increase your, um, increase your open rates and, uh, for people to open, you know, increase your click, increase your click too, like watch, you know, your email tomorrow. So that actually, right here, this might not uh, create people, unless it's like, why would I need to watch it tomorrow? And then, then they open it up because, you know, because I'm going to send it to school. Um, this one helps you find a keyword, I wanted to let you know. Um, and what I'm talking about here is, let's say, you know, start off, watch out. You know, you know, and then and a lot of times, if you really want to get into it, be sure to watch out. Because, you know, and then you could just do, I could, you know, based upon this, you know, be sure to watch out. So this is what somebody's going to read. Watch out. Oh, be sure to watch out. Because what? What? i got to open it up more to read it. And then, bam, here we go. Because I'm going to send you some to some cool. They'll be able to read these in the email. So you want to think about this. The first line in the email uh, does uh, make sense. That, does that make sense? Is that clearly uh, display that, Dave? Yes, sir, it does. Okay, cool. So I just want to make sure. So that really does help out, um, you know, from there. Um, test using their name, um, um, you know, versus not using their name in the subject line. So you, you know, it's one thing to test. I mean, using the name in the subject line. And what I'm talking about, when we get back to um, this example here, um, watch out, you know, uh, and then it would, you know, have to use a mail merge code, something like everyone's different F name or whatever um, it is. You know, watch out, so it'll say, watch out, John. You know, be sure to watch out, you know, because, you know, so using it, using it in the um, email, so subject, you know, using the subject line, watch out. Um, you know, or so whatever, using it inside there. A lot of people, like, and here's something that really takes into consideration, um, is a lot of people today don't actually ask for first names, so if you don't ask for first name, you can't really do this one. Hey, we don't ask for first name, so that's why I don't do it. Um, unless it's my buyer list, I can do it with my buyer list, um, because I got my buyer's information, but when I'm, when I'm having a go to opt-in pages, I don't have that information, so I won't be able to do that or make that happen. But so it's something to take into consideration. If you don't have it, you can't do it. But you can, does it can work um, you know, really well is adding that in there. So something to really think about uh, with that. Number fourteen is using the subject line, um, but don't always put it first. Kind of what I was talking about, how does that sound first thing? So what I was actually I kind of actually did it that way. Um, a lot of people only put the first name in the front. So it's like, John, watch out. I just did watch out, John. So that's how I would probably say it, um, you know, from there. But I could, instead of putting it in the front, where most people put it right here in the front, um, you know, you can put it in the back right here. Um, and you've got to find out what the mail merge code is with the program that you're using to be able to do that. But um, And make sure you actually are grabbing the, the name, um, the names so that you can do that. But so that's something to think about from there. Um, Fifteen is after revealing questions. How do you, you know, um, and kind of we did that before, and the subject line, I, I, I think I erased the subject line that I was showing you, but, um, you know, but using a question mark, or using a question, so like after a given question, like have you been blacklisted, like here, um, are you using this traffic tool? So use an example for this based upon what I kind of, you know, wrote up real quick, you know, this could be, I'll just find a few words, you know, this could be, or you, Finding keywords or finding the right. um, and you probably it might you used to be able to pull that one off. I don't have to go to that. Are you find the right keyword. You know, this is finally no sounds too software that allow you to find the keywords. Um, so doing something like that also works really, really well. Uh, but asking a revealing question, you know, does does you know, pulls them in and gets, you know, actually that would increase um, the clicks from there. Um, so number 16 is use a short subject line so it stands out in the email box. It may have too long. I keep it underneath the characters. That's, we've, we've kind of hit on that, how we do that. I go all the way across the screen. You want to keep them. I find shorter is usually better for me. Um, you know, maybe one word, two words. Sometimes the longer ones work really well. You want to keep them underneath the characters. Um, you know, a lot of times, we, what do we say, 35, 40 characters is really where we, we go. Yeah, 35, 40. So um, from there. Number 17 is building a sense of urgency. 
um, in your with your subject line. Um, and basically, um, you know, basically, you know, things from there. So building a sense of urgency. So like one thing that we might do is, you know, like recently we haven't sent out like warning, you know, only X spots left. You know, or um, you know, time four hours time. left. Yeah. Or yeah, four hours left, or this is going down at midnight. Um, you know, or you know, things like that um, to make that happen. I mean, can you think of any more that we've done, Dave? Um, right off the top of my head, I'm trying to think. And I, I, I know we've done them a lot, especially like when we're doing the events. That you you have like um, only two days left before you lose your chance to reserve your spot. Um, something along those lines. To, uh, I know you said something about uh, six hours left, four hours left. But we do that a lot of times when we're having, like, for example, when you do your Warrior Plus offers, you do dime sales. Is like, uh, um, like dime sale, uh, better, better at before it goes up, something along those lines. Um, I can't think of any more off the top of my head, though. And like replay. Um, a lot of times we do with replays because usually replays right. are going down or something like that. Right. But building a sense of urgency, um, you know, really helps out from there. The other thing. And this is one thing that's interesting. Um, test, test, or choose the right from name um, when the email address, um, like maybe using your personal name, maybe your company name, maybe your newsletter name or product name. So whenever you're sending to people, you know the email address it's coming from and the name is coming from. Um, you know, we Dave, why don't you give an example of the ones that we use? Because we got three different ones. So can you tell them how we're doing that one. Okay. Well, we have three separate lists technically. Uh, we call it once my list that I, I do 100% on my own. There's another one that we have. Uh, we we call it the middleman. Um, that's where it's uh, it's more of Matt's type of people, but there might be some of my people on that list, and then he has his own. Like for example, like the the list that I mail out, it's uh, it comes from Dave. So basically, whenever I sign off, whenever I sign at the bottom, it says uh, best regards to Matt and Dave. Um, but for example, the the middleman quote unquote that we have, um, it, it actually comes from Matt at Powerful Promoter. So uh, and it's it signed off as saying Matt or Matt Basak. Now his own list, his personal list, I don't touch that ever, 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 ever. Um, and it, it actually comes from Matt, but from a different domain. Uh, but then he signs at the bottom. Normally he just signs Matt at the bottom of that. So that's the three different ways we have the different froms. Uh, no different dif differentiated. Like mine's Dave at Pop Motor and his is Matt at Pop Motor. And the other one I think is Matt at Internet Marketing Insider. Yeah, so actually let me show you this. So we have um actually the name that comes from is Matt and Dave, I believe. The Matt and Dave, yeah. And the name the email address is like Dave at here, and then we've got basic and I think that comes from uh, at Alpha Motor. That's the other list, and then the other list we send from. Okay, and this one actually says real. Yeah, and this comes from. Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh. Yeah. So, the reason I say that is that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Just giving an example: the from name is this, the email address is this. So you can always be testing these, um, you know, different things. And those are just giving an example of you know what you can do there. And that's what I'm talking about specifically here. It's just the from name and the email address. So uh, that's one thing that we do on, you know, we're, we're doing, you can test that, uh, find out the one that, that works the best for you. You can use a company name, you can use a product name. You know, Dave's been with me for seven, seven years, so it makes sense for me to be able to use it. Plus, I got two days in my office. So, um, but, and then when we sign them, you know, if it's, I don't sign my Matt, you know, the real Matt, but, um, but I do sign it with my name on in the one that I'm sending um, to Matt and Dave or Dave and Matt list, it'll actually sign the bottom of Matt and Dave. So, you know, uh, so that's something to think about from there. Um, the number 19 is, is use a redirect program. Uh, kind of what we were talking about 
earlier, but um, redirect you know piece of software. Um, and what I'm talking about is you know we actually use a thing called a Philly Link Bomber, but it's a it's a it's a piece of software. All it is is a redirect, and we don't use a third party redirect, which means that you know redirects that. Uh, you know, you could go like Google and Bitly, and there's things like that. But what we do is we use a redirect program that um, we actually post and install on an account. So we actually set them up at different. Uh, we used to go buy a cheap hosting account. We install them on there. We have multiple different ones, and we typically, Dave, when do we switch them out? I rotate them every day. Well, for so every we mailing. So pretty much every time we mail, we rotate them. And the reason for that is because if we mail one and it for some reason, let's just say, it gets you know caught up in a blacklist, um, you know, then we mail it at night, we won't be able to get it delivered through. So what we do, you don't have to do it, we might go overboard on it, but what one thing I do find is there's like these hidden um, uh, hidden um, uh, I guess rules in some of these places, I think specifically like Yahoo, like um, that it, when you send an email out, like within a certain period, and they see a bunch of them, then they'll actually shut off that link. So if your email already went, and then you know within 20, and it actually goes away. So after like 24 hours, something like that. So all we're doing is protecting us to make sure that you know we are mailing out, and realize we're mailing a lot more than the average person. So um, you know if you've got a small list, you're not going to do this. But I tell people once you get to 100,000 uh, list of 100,000 or more, you may want to consider having using multiple different redirects and um, using those whenever you're sending them out. Uh, from there, so uh, you know, different redirect program. Another one is, in, in kind of, we we opened up with uh, you know the negative using the negative subject line, but another thing is to be controversial and shocking. Um, actually, the word shocking does work as well in a subject line, but you know, controversial or shocking, um, you know, could work really well. Like you know, this really pissed off the gurus. A lot of people do that, or something like that. Uh, but using something that's kind of like shocks people, um, could be controversial, uh, works really well in uh, subject lines to get people to kind of, you know, to open up for sure. Um, you want to make sure that when they are reading it, it is so relevant to uh, what you're talking about. But um, but getting people to open up, shocking and, uh, uh, you know, controversial can really help out. Um, anything you specifically you'd like to say about this, Dave, or, you know, maybe you got some in answers, ideas. I know I'm, I'm actually asking out of the blue, but... Yeah, I, I I can't think of anything on top of my head. I was sick. I, I was like, I bet he's gonna ask me something. I, I'm 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 drawing a blank right now at this moment. Okay, so yeah, just to give you a general idea, I mean, we do use. I mean, there are times we'll use them. Um, I, I'm trying to think of one that worked really well a long time ago. It was like something about like aliens or something. It's like.